I'm using unsleeved wires because I wanted four wires and the cord grip doesn't uh, screw up tight enough to trap single wires. Uh, my intention is for this to be all wired within the confines of the boiler housing, i.e. not to run out, so it's not like an exposed flex. Might need to consider. Okay, so for testing purposes only, I'll be using this, but uh, for future installation it will either have to be three core wire or a multi-core, four core wire with overall insulation. So you can get it clamped up in the uh, uh, cord grip screws. So uh, for testing purposes then, uh, neutral into there, that's a blue wire, live into there with a loop round to two, uh, green for earth into there, and then the live return which is white wire in my case, into three. Uh, so the switch contacts are two and three. That's just looped through from the live and then it'll go back down the wire, white wire to the boiler. You'll see the boiler end in a moment. So if you look at the wiring diagram, what I've got is blue, brown into there, a brown loop through to there, white onto there, and a green onto there, which isn't shown on this wiring diagram. And that's four wires, which are going to go back to the boiler. The debate I've just had with myself was whether to put the live wire, where is it? It's up there, into the uh, live in or the live out uh, down there, yep. Uh, and I was wondering, now the neutrals are electrically bonded together. Uh, there's nothing powered up. But the uh, live goes through a five amp fuse under a cover there. So what I'm going to do is connect it into the live out. It would work whichever way we did. Well, it was live in or live out because the live in is uh, fused at 13 amps but the live out there has an additional 5 amp fuse on it and therefore I'm going to put it into the live out rather than the live in. I was just concerned in case there was a function of the boiler which turned off the live out at any time uh, but I, as far as I can tell there isn't anything so, because I didn't want it to power down the uh, nest control panel. I want the nest control panel to remain powered at all times and it will remain powered unless the uh, 5 amp fuse under there goes, as far as I can tell. I've just opened the box for the stand, so I don't need to wire up the um, 12 volt wires uh, there's a stand. It's a, it's a, got a very quite heavy, I guess, steel base, uh, and that's it. Just a chunk of plastic. But the thing it does have is an interestingly shaped plug, which says Nest on it, with a USB socket on the top. And then in this carton here, I'm assuming that's just a USB lead, uh, and that will provide the power to the thermostat uh, and then later on I can use the wall mounting and use the 24 volt supply from the uh, nest thing by the boiler whatever they call that but I can put the thermostat on now just on the stand the stands are at the moment being offered free with uh, the nest thermostats from many suppliers so you get a thermostat and stand I got mine from Screwfix when you peel off the uh, plastic protective bit it uh, exposes a rubber base which means it doesn't slide about very easily so it's quite a good weight and it doesn't slide about which is useful it's not uh, it will stay on something 
quite nicely. Did I call it a hive? What a mistake. Dress dreadful. So there's the Nest thermostat, uh, the wall mounting device, this thing. Uh, just fits by a couple of screws onto the wall. We'll take the 12 volt wires T1 and T2 into there uh, from the existing thermostat. And then the Nest thermostat will plug into that with that multi-pin plug. Uh, quite a few pins there. And it's, uh, anyway, there we go. I was going to say it looks like it's quite fragile. So I won't want to be messing about with that very much. And there you have the uh, socket for the alternative USB connection when it's mounted on the stand. So that's the Nest and its stand. I mean, Nest and its wall mounting, which comes with the thermostat. Uh, but it would need the 12 volt supplies to there and uh, what I'm going to use is the stand with the USB lead into the back of it and then put the wall bracket on later once I've tested the whole system. Well uh, <laughs> okay I can't put the thermostat onto the stand without this backing plate thing that goes onto the wall. So Presumably, if you want to have it portable, unless I discover something else, then uh, you've got to unscrew this from the wall, attach this bit to the stand, and then plug it in, because it won't stand on the stand with that in. Uh, I might decide to what modify the stand so that you can hold that on. I'm not oh well there we go that's just the way it goes it looks like that has to go into there anyway and what you've got in here is a socket up there for the USB lead and the USB lead goes into this back plate and then the back plate goes onto the stand and then the thermostat plugs into that so rather longer on the stand than I thought it would have a couple of machine screws hold the back plate onto the stand rather than attaching the back plate to the wall where my thermostat is and then the uh, nest thermostat will plug onto that like that right so I'm about to go through setup there's the nest wired in with four wires I'll um, add a circuit diagram I'm going to power on the, the um, boiler the light come on on that and nothing has blown up it's all very reassuring so that's doing something there and I'll continue with the installation which is setting up the Wi-Fi and setting up the thermostat so there's the nest at the beginning of setup uh, I'm going to stop the video and um, if we need to do a video on setup then we can do that okay I've just tested the system uh, what I had to do uh, was keep twisting the outside dial to select the password for the Wi-Fi that was the most tricky bit learning how to switch between alpha numeric between alpha and numeric characters for the long password uh, but then the rest of it was fairly straightforward. I've put in my postcode so it knows where I am, where I live, so it can work out the weather. And uh, it's just done the test where it turned the boiler on, closed it up, and was on. it turned the boiler on, and then when I press it again to turn the heating off, the uh, boiler went through its shutdown process. So. Uh, the reason I'm saying that is because the way I've connected the wires up means that uh, the control from the Nest base station near the boiler means it receives the uh, demand control from the thermostat uh, but still has full mains power to the boiler at all times so it can do its shutdown process of just continuing to circulate water when it likes and I think the boiler has a frost stat on it uh, which will mean it will do that and uh, as it says here the heat has been turned off and the radiator should start cooling down but I heard the boiler going on and off uh, 
what do you want to test? Heating. Right? I was waiting for this to come on, so I dashed over. Okay, it says done. Testing heating. In fact, I think the boiler must be on its um, own wait period. I'll go and check. I'm just feeling the pump. Yes, the pump is running. So the demand has started the pump running. Um, but the uh, gas hasn't fired yet. Uh, sorry about the background noise there. So that demand control from the uh, thermostat has set the pump in operation. And I was hoping the gas would fire up, but uh, it's taken a little while. The heat exchanger's cool, so it's not fired up yet. But it, it did fire up, and as you, you can hear it now running, uh, this uh, Worcester Bosch combi has a mind of its own. Uh, it's on, and it's now stopping it. It modulates itself. Okay, so that's, uh, there's a blue light there, which comes on. That's running fine. Uh, what I'm going to go and do is just press it to turn off that part of the test. And I'll tell you what, I'll leave the camera there so you can hear it. Don't know what you're looking at. And I've just pressed it to turn off. That's off. But you might hear that the uh, boiler is still doing something. So. Uh, that's why it's important to have the mains power still connected to the boiler. And there's the Nest machine box, which I can now put somewhere. And those two wires dangling down there out of focus are the wires from the old thermostat, uh, which can be used as power 12 volts to the Nest thermostat if I decide to mount it on the wall. But at the moment, I think I'll just put some insulation tape on those and leave it for now and just use the thermostat on its stand uh, unless I get fed up with that. But listen, apart from that man outside drilling a hole in the garden, you can hear something still running there. So it's quite important that we don't follow the wiring diagram uh, as laid out in the installation booklet. This is the Westerbosch insulation manual and this clarifies some of the wiring. So as installed you have the live neutral and earth wires going in. You saw that I added an extra green block which added the extra earth wire out to the nest. Uh, the live and neutral to the nest are taken from the live and neutral out from the boiler uh, the neutrals bonded through but the live goes for an extra 5 amp fuse and then uh, I left in the link which was there for the hot water that's that one there but uh, brought one back from the nest to the live return so the four wires I have are live and neutral, earth uh, going out to the, to the nest controller and then the live return from the nest and that's the wires as shown in the Worcester Bosch installation manual. Um, so all complies with the whatever it is, guidance. Out, isn't it? So that's the uh, the image there that will help me do the circuit diagram if you really need one. And do the wiring and draw a diagram for you uh, live. 
Okay, so one of the things I did was to drop an earth wire. This is the nest and this is the Worcester Bosch circuit board. It continues along there, long way. There's the diagram in the Worcester Bosch circuit diagram. The earth terminals, uh, earth live neutral in, live and neutral out, live return for radiators, live return for water and frost stat on there. Won't worry about that. So one of the wires that I put in was just an earth wire. It's the earth wire, there's one point on there, comes along, drops down into there. Okay, and that was a, a green wire, could be green, yellow. And then what we've got is live out and neutral out. Well, one of the things that I did was loop the live from there to there. It's just a little loop. And then take the live out from here and put it into the same one there. The neutral out from there. And that goes over there and into neutral in there. Okay. And then the live return from there, from terminal three, back along here and back into that position there, which is the live return. That's it. Once you've worked it out, it's fairly simple. Uh, it's a combination then. The most accurate diagram you could say is a diagram in the Worcester Bosch uh, manual. It's a fair bit different in terms of that wiring from the diagram shown uh, on the nest. Don't get, sorry, the way I've drawn it uh, and not used colored pencil, uh, the earth is crossing over this live return. Don't worry about that. The earth from there goes the earth on there, but basically live return from the nest three goes into that terminal there, the live return for the heating. And the live neutral out go to there with a loop across. Simple as that. And then there it is, your nest box, connected by those wires into the boiler. Seems to work fine there. I'm going to try a couple of positions for it before I uh, completely fit it behind um, a panel so that it's out of sight. So I'll take a photograph of that circuit as well uh, when I've tidied up that earth wire. If that comes into focus, you'll see download the Nest app or create an account, then select add product. You'll need this entry key and there's a key I'm hiding with my thumb. Uh, but when I download the app, create an account and try and do something, it says scan the QR code and nowhere on the Nest thermostat, its box, or the instruction manual that I've got here, is there a QR code? And I've already tried to continue without scanning once. Let's try it again.